Hello, I'm Nigel Nicholson. I'm a professor here at London Business School and I'm here to talk to you about leadership. I know there's, this is a subject about which perhaps far too much has been written already. So I hope I have something here that is really quite different and new for you and I think shed some new light on leadership. First of all, let's get one thing straight, that leadership is not a thing. Leadership is a process. It's a process that helps us coordinate systems, if you like. Now, there are many ways of coordinating. A flock of birds rises without there having to be a leader, but they do it spontaneously. They coordinate spontaneously. Well, we humans, we like to have often humans that help us to coordinate and organize, and we call that leadership. Now, if we look across the sweep of history, you can see actually leadership again is not a single thing, but many different things. There's so many different ways of being a leader, so many different kinds of leaders. And often you find in history cometh the moment cometh the man or the woman. And of course, history produces people and it spits people out as well. We see leadership, success and failure, and this is how history has often proceeded. And my explanation for this is what I call the leadership formula, and that is that leadership effectiveness means being the right person in the right place and the right time doing the right thing. Okay, now that amounts to a framework which I call the SPQ framework. Here we are, uh, and we have leadership situations. There are many kinds of leadership situations, situations of war, situations of peace, situations of complexity, situations of simplicity. And they require different P, different processes. This is leadership as a process. This is what leaders do. Okay, so we have the S and we have the P. And if you get these things matched up, you have effectiveness. Now, this is where you bring in the, the human agent is the Q. Okay, the qualities, the unique qualities of the person. Now, so the person comes along who does the right thing for the right situation. But does that last? I mean, what upsets the apple cart, of course, is that the world changes and the leader doesn't change. And the story of history is often of leaders who fail. One of the best things that Nelson Mandela did was realizing that it was time that he was no longer the man that was re required to lead the situation he was in. And he moved on, passing over to someone else. And wise leaders are able to do this. So this means to be a leader often means to be strategic. Um, how versatile can a leader be? Let's look at it another way. Let's just, just turn this into a bit more of a, a picture of human nature. And you can say, you can say here what we have is a model that says about seeing, being, and doing. So we are quite used to the fact that, you know, who you are determines what you do. Okay, we do what we, generally speaking, we feel comfortable doing what we like doing. Moreover, who we are often determines who we see, you know. A hungry man sees the world as full of food. I mean, the, your, state, your state of mind influences what you see. Um, as a consequence, often we spend a lot of time in leadership development thinking a lot about this and thinking a lot about this. We spend a lot of time trying to choose people who are going to fit the situations that they're in. We spend an endless pains, but of course by the time we've chosen them, the world has often changed. And then we hope they're going to do what, what they're supposed to do. If they don't, then we give them lots of big bonuses and give them lots of rules in order to control their behavior. Again, with the hope that it's going to kind of meet the, the situation. And actually we're spending far too little time in this area. And that is trying to influence what leaders see. Now I know as an educator, I can't really change people. People might change themselves, but I can't change people. Sometimes I can influence what people do. I can set rules and so on and give people assignments or whatever. But ultimately, my real task is to help people to see the world in a different way. And if you see the world in a different way, in a sense, you are a different person. If you see yourself and you see the world, what, how you see the world really does shape your identity. It also shapes what you do. So to be strategic, to, to have a strategic approach to leadership means to spend a lot more time thinking about this box. It means thinking about what do leaders see? What do leaders take for granted? What's in their world? How can we open leaders' minds and lead, leaders' eyes to things that they can't see? Because the, one of the problems we have is leaders are surrounded by people who tell them what they want to hear or what they believe is true. And leaders m need to, to spend much more time understanding that this is where they can really make a difference. They, and of course, 
one of the roles of leaders is to change the ways others, other people see. This is again unlocks the key to leadership effectiveness. Well, all this is in my new book. My new book is called The Eye of Leadership, Strategies for Seeing, Being and Doing, and it's published in April. Thank you very much.